Hey folks, this is Ben from ultrabooknews.com once again with the Sony Bio Duo 13 Haswell Ultrabook and today we're going to be playing a couple games to take a look at the performance. Um, so this is the Core i5 version of the Duo 13 and inside it has HD Graphics 4400. Um, you can get a couple different um, versions of HD Graphics and Ultrabooks now because they are uh, making a distinction between the um, the different graphics cores and the different processors. So Core i3 has a different graphics core clock than Core i5 and Core i7, um, and that, that's actually always been the case for the most part. Um, but now they're actually changing up the what they're calling the uh, the graphics for those processors to kind of let people know, I guess, that they're getting you know a different a different speed. So there's, I believe, between 4200 and 4500 now uh, HD graphics, um, and that's in the ultra-low voltage versions that you find in Ultrabooks. Um, there's also the Iris Pro, which you may have heard of, um, but those, I don't believe, um, can be found on, any of, the, on the, any of the ULV processors, so you'll never find those in Haswell Ultrabooks. Um, so today I'm going to play some games that you would kind of expect to be able to play in or with an Ultrabook. So we're going to start off with Minecraft. And the Bio Duo 13, I believe I said this is the Core i5 version. So it's HD 4200 um, and it's a 1080p display. So um, you are getting a boost in graphics power from um, previous Ultrabooks to Haswell Ultrabooks, but you also have to, you know, it gets counterbalanced by the fact that we're now looking at a lots of 1080p displays. Uh, a lot of the previous generation were 1366 by 768, so, um, you know, you're almost, that's almost a two-fold increase in resolution that, that these are asking to be pushed at. So I started the game out here um, at full screen, it's 1080p, and the graphics are currently all set to maximum. So graphics are fancy, render distance far. Um, I've set the performance to max FPS, um, advanced OpenGL is on, and that's about it. Smooth lighting is set to maximum as well. And if I hit F3 here, I can see in my house here in my storage room I'm getting 36 FPS. Anything above 30 is fine for me. Um, I, you know, this isn't an FPS, so you don't need, you know, 60 or above. So anything above 30 is fine for me because it's going to look smooth. Uh, but we're in a confined space right here, only pulling 35, so when we get out and about, uh, it's likely that we're going to see some slowdowns. So let's go check that out. And as I'm playing, I feel it's getting a little sluggish here. The world's loading in around me, as Minecraft does. It's not a terribly optimized game, um, and I'm on a multiplayer server, so it's relying on the network as well. Um, so out here, the world's still loading in, but I'm still looking fairly decent, 27 FPS. Again, I'd prefer above 30, but... Um, as long as we're not down under the 20s, it's not going to hurt too bad. So, yep, 27, 30, right there. Uh, that's not bad, running at full settings at 1080p. So I'll just do a little bit of exploring to get a feel for what kind of frame rate we can get out of this. Jungle biomes like this one over here tend to be some of the most uh, demanding environments in the game. So I'll run over here and see what kind of numbers um, we're looking at. Just getting hung up a little bit probably as it's loading in the environment. Um, but I'm still about 27 outside the jungle now that I'm into the jungle. More like 24, 25, 26. Yeah, and slowing down as we're loading more, down to the 20s and back up to 26. Yeah, it's it's not bad. I just saw it dip down to 19. Um, I wouldn't want to run around a jungle biome all day. Um, but so we can fix that easily by bringing down some of these settings that don't matter too much. Personally, um, I don't really care for fancy graphics because I've gotten used to playing on uh, fast graphics. The main thing that that does is turn uh, grass and, um, or I'm sorry, it turns foliage, like leaves, from being transparent into being just completely, um, completely non-see-through blocks, like right here. So normally I'd be able to see through there, and the geometry behind that would have to render. 
but now that um, they aren't transparent anymore, uh, it means it has to less it has to render less on screen. So it helps keep the improve or keeps the frame rate up. So now with just that change from fancy to um, fast, I'm much closer to 30, if not above 30 now, in this jungle biome. So there's 29, 31 popping up over there. I'm going to hop out of the jungle biome and see what we can get out in a normal open environment. Yeah, it's still around the 30s, which isn't bad, but, you know, since there aren't a lot of trees out where I am right now, we're not going to see a huge difference between fancy and not fancy. So let's see what else we can do to play with the frame rate. Um, turning down the render distance from far to normal is another easy one, not too much of a sacrifice. And I'm surprised to see that that's actually not having a huge impact on the frame rate. Um, so every time I make a certain graphics changes like that, it actually has to reload all of the world around me. Um, so that can kind of slow down the frame rate for the time being until everything loads in. Uh, but I'm still seeing between 25 and 26 as everything's loading in, which is actually kind of weird because now that, you know, most of the chunks are loaded, I would expect it to be back up at 30. Okay, yeah, it is now up there toward 30 when it's not loading anything. So that would probably be my recommended way to play graphics at fast, uh, render distance at normal. Um, and I should also say that I'm currently using the latest uh, HD 4400 graphics drivers as of today's date. I just checked before for a new one before I started and I've got the latest one. Um, let's just see for the heck of it what happens when we turn everything down. So I'll turn graphics from, I accidentally flip them, okay, so I'll keep them on fast. Turn render distance down to tiny, smooth lighting off. Keep performance at max FPS. Um, and that should be about everything. So now I'm looking at 55, 60 FPS, 41 when I'm sprinting around. And it's loading in these chunks again, so we'll give it a minute or two to uh, load everything back in so we can get a real feel for what it'll be. So yeah, it looks like with everything turned down we're looking at 60 once everything's loaded and it's and everything's calm. It's sitting at 30 right now, I think there's a uh, still chunks loading in. It's kind of strange just jumping around between it was at 60 just a minute ago and now it's almost like it's locked at 30, which shouldn't be the case because I'm at max FPS, Let's see. which should unlimit the frame rate. Oh yeah, it looks like it's just hanging out at 30 right now. Um, there it goes back up into the 60s. Perhaps all those cows were giving it some trouble. So that's what happens at 1080p. Now another thing we can see is what happens when we bring the size of the window down and reduce the resolution. It doesn't seem to be having a major effect surprisingly, even though it has to render at a lower resolution. So it's back up. It jumps up to 60 for some reason, but then cuts back down. It's kind of strange. It may have something to do with the CPU throttling itself. The settings with Windows 8 are, um, in particular in the Sony Ultrabook, the uh, power settings are kind of locked down from the user, so I don't have a terrible amount of control over what the CPU and fan is doing. I'm surprised actually we haven't heard the fan turn on yet. Um, when it does get going, you'll hear that it can get quite loud. Um, so that's Minecraft. Yep, with HD 4400 at 1080p, you can play Minecraft at around 30 FPS uh, with everything um, mostly all the way up, but graphics to fast and render distance to normal, I would recommend. So that's good to know. This is the kind of game that you know you'd have to be able to take your, you know, not need a desktop gaming rig to handle, and that's exactly what we're seeing here, so that's good. 
So now we're going to move on to the next game, which is going to be World of Warcraft, which is an absolutely massive game. The download is something like 20 gigabytes these days. This game has been out since, uh, I want to say 2008, maybe. Um, 2000, yeah, probably 2008, maybe a little earlier. Um, so this is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game. So you have hundreds of characters uh, in the world at any given time. And over the years they've added expansions and the size of the game is just huge. So expect to reserve a big bit of your hard drive if you want to install this. So because they have such a massive uh, game, they've actually uh, kind of rejigged it since they've launched so that you can actually um, kind of play it as you're downloading it. So this little icon, if you can see at the top of the screen right here, says important game data is currently being downloaded. So this is, I mean, this whole environment's already downloaded and ready to go, but there's no sound right now, and I think that may be because the sound elements have not been downloaded yet. Um, so I believe I'm running at full settings right now, 1080p, and I'm definitely getting above 30 FPS. Feels really good. Let's take a look at that, just to be sure. So yeah, we're at 1080. Uh, actually, no, I'm not at high settings. I'm at the good settings. So we're gonna see what that feels like. Let me crank it up to ultra. So we've definitely come down in the 20 range, maybe lower with ultra settings at 1080p. Um, I definitely wouldn't want to play like this, just too choppy. And you would get even worse performance when you go into a raid or something with a ton of characters. So I'll uh, leave it like this for a minute so we can hear the fan crank up. As you can hear, it's really getting going now. This does not happen often, but when you get a demanding game and the processor sees fit, it uh, kind of goes crazy. And I should mention that there are settings that Sony's built into the Duo 13, uh, which let you set a preference for um, basically a power preference for when the lid is up versus down. So I have it set so that up is for performance and down is for uh, kind of low um, low power usage. So let's actually see when I close this if the fan calms itself down. And yeah, I can hear right away the fan's cut shutting down or at least slowing down and that probably means that the processor is also throttling itself in order to compensate, and yeah, I can kind of feel that right there. We're at like 10 FPS, if that, maybe five. So let's bring it back up. And yeah, we're back up from 10 to maybe 15. Like I said, wouldn't want to play like that, so let's see how we get it to where we want it to be. Good felt like it was definitely 30, so let's uh, try the middle option there, high. doesn't feel terribly, but it does feel a little bit sluggish on the turns. I apologize for not having a higher level character to go actually see some of the more significant parts of the world, but this is about as detailed as any environment's going to get. The only major performance sucking variables that come in is when you get tons of characters on screen.
So again, I'd, I'd probably bring this down into the good setting, but let's see how it feels on low. So low's really dropped the draw distance, but the frame rate is easily above 30, maybe up to 60. Yeah, I would say 60 here. Um, but the quality is way down. I mean, these textures are bad, and the draw distance is really short. Um, so again, not ideal to play, but if you really care about performance, um, you can easily get, looks like, close to 60 FPS here uh, in World of Warcraft from an Ultrabook, which is pretty cool. But I prefer some of the detail back, so let's take a look at how it feels running around on good. So good, uh, texture re resolution is set to good. Uh, we've got four times anastropic filtering. Projected textures are on. Most of the other settings are set to good, except for sun shafts are set to low. Um, and SSAO is set to low as well. Um, and I'm sure that you could toy with some of these. You can see how much better it looks as I just changed it there. Um, and I'm still feeling about 30 FPS, and it still feels good on the turn. And uh, you can, I'm sure you can toy with a lot of those settings to um, probably bring up the detail even higher while maintaining the frame rate just by toying and finding out you know, which particular settings HD 4400 is good at dealing with. You know, Some things like anti-aliasing it might be particularly bad at, but the computer might have no problem handling, handling textures at ultra. So that comes down to just optimizing for yourself. But the good setting if you're running on 4400 with a Core i5, I think will give you good performance, and the game still looks pretty good. Um, it's just a little bit less shiny than at Ultra. So that's World of Warcraft on the Sony Bio Duo 13 Haswell Ultrabook. Um, I hope this has been informative for some of the for some of you uh, interested in gaming on an Ultrabook, and I'll catch you guys next time.